Hello friends. One of the most requested videos when I purchased the Fujifilm X100V was a walkthrough of how I set up the camera for X, Y, or Z type of photography, street photography, landscapes, etc. So in this video, I will walk through the menus. I've reset them all to their defaults so we can go through and check out all of the different things that I do to set up a camera. Now, I'm gonna set up a camera differently for different situations. I'm gonna set up different cameras differently. In this video, I'll just be talking about the Fujifilm X100V, but a lot of these things will actually apply to the uh, previous X100 series cameras, like the Fujifilm X100F that we had before this, was set up much the same way. Really quickly, before we get into the menus, members, I wanna make sure to let you know to check out Member Monday this week because I talk through some news and some plans that I have, and I have a question for you. So if you are a member, check out the description below because I will tell you how to find Member Monday there. And if you're not a member, but you're curious about things like my Member Monday videos, other behind the scenes type of videos, my long form courses, free download codes for my eBooks, all of that stuff, I will put a link to find out more about channel membership in the description as well. One more thing before we actually get into the menus. Let me discuss camera settings, things like exposure settings. So it's gonna be different for every situation, right? And then within each situation, I'm going to change my settings. But in general, when I put my camera on the shelf, uh, I try to set it to kind of a baseline. And that's going to be for this camera, I'm going to set it to an aperture priority style. So I will have a shutter speed on A for auto. I will even put ISO sensitivity on A for auto. We'll get into some parameters on that when we look at the menus. Uh, I'll make sure that my exposure compensation is on zero. And for the uh, aperture, actually I'll just leave the aperture wherever it is because it's so tactile that you can see what the aperture is on the, on the lens itself. Uh, I'm not gonna make any mistakes, but typically I would set it to like an F4 or an F8 if this was a camera where I wouldn't be able to see the aperture on the lens. Okay, now, now let's get into the menus. Starting off in the image quality settings, I will typically put this on RAW. Occasionally I will use RAW plus JPEG, but generally I'm only shooting in RAW. Keep in mind that I do have Fujifilm X-RAW Studio on my computer, which means that I can use that to apply any of my film simulations, etc. And then I do like to use lossless compressed for my RAW as well. And then speaking of film simulations, I have this on standard right now because that's what happens when you reset the camera, but this could literally be on anything because I like to use all of the different film simulations. We will get back to how I set film simulations a little bit later in the menus. And then I leave much of the rest of this menu the same. Now for long exposure noise reduction, this is one of those items that I may or may not have on. Because if I'm doing something like astrophotography and I'm doing a time lapse, so I'm using the interval timer, I may want to turn long exposure noise reduction off so that I don't have the camera doing its computations and doing that long exposure noise reduction after each shot. This really just depends on the situation. Moving into the autofocus manual focus settings. I typically leave this on single point. There are certainly times where I will use zone or the wide slash tracking, namely if I'm using face detect. And speaking of face and eye detection, I do typically turn this on and leave it on. But again, we will get back to later in this menu when I will use a button on the camera to turn on or off face detect. And we did settle on turning the touchscreen mode off. This is mainly because Raymond doesn't really like to use the touchscreen. I haven't quite decided myself. So for now we're leaving it off, but occasionally I will end up turning it on so that I can touch to autofocus. In the shooting settings menu, I have interval timer shooting exposure smoothing on. I find this very helpful when I am using any of the 
automatic modes on the camera, for example, like I have it set right now, where it's kind of in an aperture priority mode with auto ISO. The next thing that I change is the ISO auto, I always call it auto ISO <laughs> setting. And you can have different levels of auto ISO here. In auto three, this is where your maximum sensitivity is the highest. And it maxes out here on default at 3200. I generally just crank that up to 12,800. I do leave minimum shutter speed at 1 60th of a second. That being said, on any given day, I might change that. Now here's where the neutral density filter can be turned on or off. I generally leave this off, but later on we will discuss how I set a button to turn the neutral density filter on or off. And then in the movie settings menu, I pretty much leave everything the same. I like to use 4K at 30 frames per second. This film simulation though, this could be anywhere. Again, I like to use the film simulations in my still images and I like to use them in my videos. Autofocus mode, similarly, this will change depending upon my situation. So you'll notice already that I've said that this will depend on my situation. I do think it's important to know your camera's menus, no matter what camera you're using, know the menus, know what each of the settings does, because oftentimes for me, I'm gonna wanna go in and make changes to these settings. And if you've watched many of my videos, you know I am a huge fan of the camera's manual. If you have questions about your camera's settings, the manual nearly always will explain what that setting is, what it does, and what each of your choices are. The next option is face and eye detection setting. I have this off right now because I would say generally with this camera, I've been doing more video of things and not people but I might turn this on if I have people in the frame because the face and eye detect works really quite well. All right, the setup menu. One important item here is the My Menu. The My Menu is an extra menu that will pop up in, at the bottom underneath the user settings menu if you choose items that you want to add to it. I don't have anything added to it right now because of the flexibility that I have with the function buttons on the camera as well as the cue screen. So I haven't found a need to add anything to my menu yet. However, I think this is a great option for most of my cameras. I do add things to the My Menu. In sound setup, Luckily, the autofocus beep is off by default, but I do turn off operation volume. In screen setting, I do have this set to eye sensor plus LCD image display. However, again, this is something that might change. I have a button on the camera set to change this for me. Moving on down, I like all of these defaults. One thing that I do want to mention here is the display custom settings. You can change what you see in your viewfinder, both your optical viewfinder and your electronic viewfinder slash LCD screen here. I love this. Now I haven't made any changes to it yet because I kind of like how it's set up right now, but I love that I can take away or add things to my viewfinder so that it can be as cluttered as I want or it can be as minimal as I want. Moving on to button and dial setting. The important thing here for me is the function setting. This sets all of the buttons and dials on the camera. So the first function button, I change it to film simulation. This way I can change my film simulations. What happens is the menu will pop up in my electronic viewfinder or on the LCD screen so that I can change the film simulations on the fly. And for the section, second function button, this is where I will turn on or off my neutral density filter. That being said, there are times, especially if I'm doing something like street photography, where I want to be able to turn my face detect on and off very quickly, I might change this button to face detect on or off. So I can just quickly turn it on or off so that the camera will either key in to those faces and focus on them or completely ignore them in terms of autofocus. These touch screen functions are irrelevant because as you saw earlier, we have the touch screen turned off right now. And the auto exposure lock, auto focus lock button. I just don't use it, so I change it to something else. I like for this to be my view mode. This way, I can have my camera set up to have the electronic viewfinder only on. And then if I want to use the flip out screen, 
and I'll be able to switch from the electronic viewfinder to the LCD screen on the back of the camera. I leave the rear dial as focus check. And then the toggle on the front of the camera, I actually turn to none. However, what it does when it is turned to none like this, when you toggle that switch, you will change from the electronic viewfinder to the optical viewfinder. I have found that I have generally stopped using optical viewfinders when I can help it. I do really like the electronic viewfinders these days. The one on the X100V is very good. However, Raymond still likes to use the optical viewfinder. So for those of you that share cameras like we do in our household, you can have this toggle set to change between the optical viewfinder and electronic viewfinder. Moving back into our main menus, uh, the command dial setting, I leave these as they are, leaving all these in their defaults. In connection settings, I like that by default, Bluetooth is off so that it preserves the battery life a little bit. And then another important setting here is PC connection mode. I do like to use Fujifilm XRAW Studio, like I believe I mentioned earlier. To do that, you do need to plug your camera into your computer. You need to have the camera in a certain mode, and that is USB raw convert slash backup restore. And that's all for how I change my menus on my Fujifilm X100V from the defaults. So like I said throughout, there are going to be variations in all of those different menu items. Over time, I might change things. Over time, Raymond might change things. So that's what it is today. That's what we are kind of using as our baseline for this camera. And if you're interested in more videos like this, where I talk through how I have my camera set up, uh, the Leica Q2, for example, has been a, a popular camera that people have been asking me about anything else, let me know. Let me know down in the comments if that's something that you'd be interested in. And if you have any questions about how I set up this camera, or if you set up your X100 series camera a little bit differently than me, let me know. And that's it, everybody. Members, make sure you check out Member Monday this week, and I'll be back later this week, as usual, with more videos. Thanks for watching.